Hey guys, Bridget here and in this video I'm going to talk about uh, how you manage to work with Fortune 500 companies while working as a freelance uh, remote designer. Now this is going to be really useful especially when it comes to your mindset, uh, when it comes to creating your design portfolio. So let's get started with the very first uh, principle and what really happened. So. When I first started working as a remote designer, I was actually working part-time for two companies. And uh, while I was working part-time for them, I didn't really have the, the portfolio or they didn't really make me work uh, on uh, um, a vast amount of projects. So pretty much I had like those two projects uh, those two main projects in my portfolio, I also had other ones. But the problem was that uh, my ideal client uh, was here and uh, I was pretty much uh, doing this. I was doing blue, but I needed to show some yellow in the portfolio. And this is uh, essentially um, in the fact that they made me work a lot of on the websites and uh, not uh, as many web apps uh, as I wanted. And the web apps that, that I was working on weren't really like uh, excellent from a, from a UI design perspective. They were really functional from a UX, but they didn't really shine in the portfolio. So although those were good, uh, I needed some more. And uh, what I decided to do is I decided to create uh, a UI kit. And uh, after that, I created a series of uh, UI kits, which uh, pretty much uh, showed uh, my potential and uh, the from a, from a visual uh, side, this. And uh, of course, I couldn't really show any UX, but uh, uh, this, uh, what, it, what it did is essentially gave me a, var a portfolio with uh, a lot of diversity and showing also my potential from uh, the visual design skill. So I didn't manage to get Fortune 500 companies uh, right from these ones, but uh, what uh, it enabled me to do is to do a series of uh, other uh, jobs and I started to accumulate uh, more and more experience with uh, companies uh, which uh, basically made my portfolio grow and grow and uh, uh, essentially I came to a point uh, where I was able to pick up uh, a Fortune 500 company and uh, that's pretty much how it went. So essentially <laughs> the biggest takeaway in all this uh, is uh, if you're working at a company and uh, you don't really have uh, the opportunity to work uh, with uh, the type of clients uh, or work on the type of projects that you really want to show on your portfolio, you don't necessarily need to wait uh, for that to happen. You can create uh, fake projects or you like it uh, in my case, which uh, has the benefit of both uh, selling them passively uh, for years to come when you create them and also to show off your skills. Or you can find uh, other small clients and then build it up from there. But what is really important is that if a client is looking for stars, you need to start accumulating those stars in your portfolio because uh, if you're just going to show, for example, um, hearts, um, it's not going to be the most uh, important thing for them. So although it might be good and uh, this analogy for maybe like logo design or websites uh, for your local restaurant, uh, um, that's not going to be really applicable to someone who's looking to solve uh, a problem for a Fortune 500 company or even just uh, a medium sized business. And uh, there's also pros and cons of working with uh, larger businesses. Um, I, I, and nowadays I don't really work with like huge companies. I work with uh, maybe like small to medium sized companies. And uh, that uh, uh, brings a lot of uh, pros in my opinion, but that's the topic for another video. So I really hope this video was helpful. And I want to remind you that I recently launched a free course on how to get started in UI UX design, where I basically show um, how to get started. And I share my nine years of experience working in the field. So feel free to check it out if you're interested in more of this topic. And I'll see you in the next video.